the same way tonight here, just among a bunch of friends from the past and uh, just really enjoying it. Uh, I guess I'm one of those representatives of the, the many that's here this weekend, or this week, uh, from Canada, eh? Hey? Uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, yeah. You introduced me, I, I come to the whole world, I guess, uh, as, uh, I guess, Red McDonald, the Irishman, that started it off, and then uh, Ivan Koloff, the Russian beer, the rest of my career. Of course, uh, as a little farm boy around Paris, even though that I was Paris, I claimed to have that company. It was a cosmetic company, Aurel, <laughs> if that is. My mom, God bless her, she's passed at 85 years old. So 18 years ago, she called me up one day and she says, uh, son, I didn't know you had a company. I said, mom, I sure need a cosmetic company, but I don't know, I don't own that company. But, uh, I come from a fa family of 10 kids and on the farm, no electricity in that, and that's not the knock. I mean, it's been a great journey. Uh, seven boys and three girls, and uh, the hardships uh, were always outdone by the greatness of a, a mother and father that could show us what a life was really about. Uh, that always kept in the back of my mind that it had to be important for my parents to think that much of getting us there every week. And uh, now at my older age, it really instilled my life to uh, that, to come back to, uh, I guess, lift me up again. Because uh, in 1995, after going through quite a trial before wrestling, the time with the law, getting into trouble. See, I thought being a tough guy, and I was supposedly wanting to be in wrestling, that I had to go out there in bars and beat somebody up and maybe some promoter would hear about me and it wasn't a good deal. But uh, as stupidity wasn't, uh, I guess, my only great quality. I ended up getting messed up and uh, doing illegal stuff and got uh, put in prison, but uh, uh, God's good. You know, I remember getting on my knees and when I was in that prison saying, Lord, I don't know how I got here, but I know I did the wrong thing. Please forgive me and, you know, I'll try to straighten up. And, well, I never did straighten up all those years. I even got worse and worse as the years went by. I let the things of this world, the drugs and the alcohol, captivate my life. And that's why I'm just so overjoyed to hear a story like Jake, as they can, uh, you know, a number of other people in the business that overcome it whenever I made that second commitment to him and was serious about it and uh, he just lifted me up and uh, pulled me away from that stuff, gave me the strength to do it. But uh, no matter how you do it, it's important that we do do what we have to do in life to get by or to succeed. And uh, I'm here among some of the greatest and I know it. First of all, I want to say thank you, my Lord and Savior, Second, to my wife and family for standing out by me. And of course the fans. You know, the fans, without them, it was already said tonight, you know wrestling. Giving me, I guess, uh, credibility in this business by uh, using me to uh, be the crutch uh, that they ended up getting in that ring and uh, uh, letting me have the prestigious WWE belt. Even for, it was for a little while. Man, that put my name on the map, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, to me, it's just great that uh, people love wrestling, I guess, as much as uh, I did all those years, because I had a dream at eight years old to be a professional wrestler, watching it on a friend's TV, kept that dream. And uh, when I was a teenager, I went to a wrestling school, and stuck it out and just uh, did what it, it takes, I guess, to uh, end up becoming famous in wrestling, but a lot of nice people along the way. Just enjoy it out there for a while. <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, I've had so many. The idea of winning the belt for Bruno Sammartino was really godsend because he was my hero. 
You know, I added up parts to give me seven years older than I am, so I became a champion in 63 as I was graduating the wrestling school. And I tell the story in my book about uh, going down to Pittsburgh to take uh, Bo Johnson's place and ended up uh, being picked to go against uh, Bruno Sammartino, the newly crowned uh, WW champion at the time. And I said, oh man, I'm so nervous. And to have somebody in the dressing room uh, kid me and pull, pull my leg and say, kid, what you have to do when he goes down in the corner and prays, because I didn't know it at the time, but he was not only praying for himself, but for uh, the care for his body, but also for his opponent, because uh, later on you hear in the story that uh, one of his opponents got uh, hurt in the ring so bad that he died, uh, that I ended up uh, loving this man. Bruno San Martino, a Brutzi, Italy, 290 pounds, strong man, and I kept that dream out of the wall. I want to be like him. To end up uh, being picked to come back to uh, the WWE at the time and, and being chosen to, uh, I might say, I guess Bruno was really hurt at the time after seven and a half years of wrestling. Uh, I put my name on the map to end up uh, having the, that title win against Bruno. And it goes to show you that people like that, Bruno, the WWE, Vince McMahon, a senior and junior, you know, being so kind to allow people like me in the business to end up propel themselves to have a career for it. As you see, I struggle with the cane and all this, and that half a dozen baggage right uh, with us, and we're trying to find a, a place for the claims, uh, baggage claims, to get outside to meet. Uh, uh, friend Tim Quinn that takes care of our uh, was a webmaster and uh, Nikita's by the way and uh, the Ted DiBiase. Anyway, we have a Christian man and he was picking me up anyway at the airport. And we're to find our way out to the passenger pickup. So I said, uh, man, I'm going to do this. I, I, mean, I can't hardly carry the key. I don't the brief and all this stuff. And so I said, oh man, maybe we'll get somebody to help us get get it out of here. We didn't know I hadn't flown in 25 years. So long, long story short, this guy comes along and he says, uh, I can pull off. He has to recognize me. He says, can I help you? Can I help you with your bag? And I said, oh man, I see you with his wife, you know, probably in the holidays. And I said, that's all right, brother. So I said, thank you, though. Thank you. appreciate it. I'm just looking for the passenger pickup, you know, if you could direct me that way. That would help me a lot. So I'm not sure. I'm not first time here. Anyway, he goes away with his wife and he comes back in a few minutes and uh, he says, I, I insist, I'm going to help you with your baggage. I just found out that uh, Patrick Pickup is over there and uh, this gentleman, big shopping man, maybe in his 40s, he ends up picking up two of my bags and uh, for a while there I thought maybe half the family was in the bags because they weigh about uh, 70 pounds each. So here he is carrying his two bags and out there to the pickup, which is a ways to go. and. And not complaining or nothing about this, but this is how nice he is. If you ever get a chance to be in uh, Gadsden, Alabama, the Logan's Restaurant, this guy, I said, what's your name, brother? And he says, Pat Barrett. I said, Pat Barrett? He said, it's a wrestler. And I said, no, no. I stopped thinking that Pat Barrett was a long time ago. I don't know if he's around anymore, but he said, no, I'm not a wrestler or anything like that. But uh, look him up. What a, what a gentleman. Just